I head the non-Newtonian fluid mechanics group at, uh, uh, in the mechanical engineering department at MIT. And uh, non-Newtonian fluid mechanics really focuses on what people call complex fluids. Those are fluids that have microstructure. So that might be polymers, it might be particles, it might be nanomaterials. But what we're really interested in is the intersection between the flow and the microstructure and how the microstructure changes the flow and then how the flow itself impacts the microstructure. Fluid flow is controlled by what happens at the boundaries. So, so a fluid naturally tends to want to stick to a boundaries. It naturally wants to cover the surface. Um, and then if I try and remove the fluid from the surface, there's always what we think of as friction or viscosity that acts at the surface. Um, a non-Newtonian fluid or a complex fluid, blood is a good example, is something that can actually respond to how the surface is structured, um, whether there's um, ridges on the surface or spikes on the surface or whether it's a smooth surface what the chemistry of the surface is, um, and then that changes the flow. So if we look at the flow in our blood vessels, for example, the red blood cells don't tend to be evenly distributed. They actually tend to align themselves with the flow um, and be spaced a certain distance from the wall. So that's an example of how a complex fluid and an interface interact. Uh, and we're really interested on the fundamental level of trying to understand that interaction and then maybe actually control it. So we might be interested in how a protein arranges itself at a surface uh, does it want to go to the surface? Um, if it does go to the surface, does it then make the surface stiffer or, or slipperier? Um, and nature does this all the time by structuring surfaces, either by having proteins go to the surface or other large molecules. And uh, that can sometimes make things uh, lower friction or maybe higher friction. So, uh, so that's how a non-Newtonian fluid and a surface or an interface interact. On a large scale, one area where this uh, can actually play a role is maybe on thinking about the friction on, say, surfaces such as boats or submarines, where you might imagine that if I control the shape of that, um, then I may be able to actually lower the frictional drag of that object. Um, sharks figured this out mil many millions of years ago. Um, their surfaces tend to be rough, they tend to be structured, and if you feel the surface of a dolphin, it tends to be coated in a, in a, a protein gel. Um, or a mucus gel, and that mucus gel again both is a non-fouling, it prevents things from growing on the surface, but also makes the surface slipperier or lower friction. And we're interested in taking some of those ideas and maybe think about making a friction reducing coating for uh, large objects. Food is a non-Newtonian fluid, um, so everything that we like to eat um, tends to have a texture, it tends to have a structure. Um, we think about things that are sticky, we think about things that are slippery or slimy, uh, all of those are adjectives that we kind of understand what it means if something is tacky or something is slimy. Uh, but trying to put those into mathematical uh, structures and trying to understand that was something that always interested me. Uh, how can I describe um, what a slimy material is? What is it that makes something particularly goopy or uh, tacky? And, and those kinds of concepts are really embodied in non-Newtonian fluid mechanics. Um, so fluid mechanics is an area that sits at the interface of material science, chemical engineering, mechanical engineering, aeronautical engineering. Everything is to deal with typically a fluid. Really what changes is how viscous the liquid is, um, what structure is inside it, whether it's particles or polymers or um, other kinds of structures. And so non-Newtonian fluid mechanics seems very specific, but it really sits at the interface of many different material sciences. Um, if you're actually interested in measuring the properties of a material, uh, we also talk about a, a science called rheology. And rheology is really understanding how matter flows. Um, I think the most common experience everyone's probably played with is silly putty. So silly putty is a good example of a complex fluid. Um, you can bounce it, you can stretch it, you can snap it. Um, and all of that depends on how fast you do it. And so we're really interested in understanding how um, we as um, engineers may be able to control the speed, the response time, uh, and the properties of those kinds of materials. The field of polymer science and technology uh, is extremely large. It's a, you know, the class of polymeric materials or um, materials that are made from hydrocarbons is extremely large. And almost all of them are processed in the liquid state. So whether we think about uh, fabrics that we might buy um, or films that we might put on walls or paints that we might uh, paint on surfaces, they all contain polymers and uh, we're really uh, trying to focus on understanding how the flow of that affects the final property um, and if I change the flow do I change the property? So 
so again, that's an example of how the fluid mechanics and the structure of the material interact. Um, on large scale applications, fiber spinning certainly is a very large one. Um, spraying and inkjet printing is an increasingly large area where you're interested in coating very large surfaces with very, very fine uh, uh, coatings of a complicated material, whether it be particles or a polymer coating. Uh, it's frequently deposited by an inkjet printing process. Um, on a much larger scale than we might experience of putting a little bit of polymer and paint on a paper, uh, you might be interested in coating a, a TV screen or something like that with a, an anti-fingerprint coating. Uh, that's frequently uh, done, or we'd like to do it, by an inkjet printing process. Um, so, so that's the kind of application areas. So as you, as you play with your food, you kind of experience the resistance. You experience how hard it is to smear something onto a surface, uh, whether it be mayonnaise or peanut butter. Uh, all of those, we kind of experience the force that's required to cause a certain kind of flow. Um, and that's exactly the same thing that you experience in industry. How hard do I have to push? How hard do I have to force this liquid through a nozzle in an inkjet printer? So making a scientific measurement of that relationship between how hard I push and how fast something goes is exactly what controls how big a pump do I need to coat this surface or how big a machine do I need to pull this fiber out at this speed. Um, so that's, that's really how um, our lab um, tries to relate to the real world is by doing measurements on a small scale, um, understanding the physics and then applying those same equations and the same properties we've measured to something on a much larger scale.